Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days for today's second video, uh, which takes around the 30th of April. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECL Ensembles, taking us through the first week of May. And I have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video, the next four weeks, that'll take us into the second half of May. Uh, of course. The first video uh, released today was the GMA seasonal model update. So that's looking at the weather next three months, May, June and July. Uh, so um, some quite interesting charts with GMA, but quite hard to interpret, uh, particularly when we get late on into uh, July. But anyway, have a look at the GMA seasonal model update to see what's going on there. We'll be doing the uh, second summer 2020 seasonal model roundup at the weekend. That's going to be at the weekend. And uh, I think that will be quite an interesting uh, watch. Hopefully we get around 13 long range ones together and see what they're all showing. We did a live stream uh, yesterday uh, on the YouTube channel. So uh, if you haven't caught up with that, then uh, uh, have a watch of it. It's on the YouTube channel right now. You can watch it back on demand. It's quite an interesting update. Um, I uh, I showed the uh, Beijing Climate Centre uh, 500 millibar hydrology charts for next winter, although we're only in April and I shouldn't really be showing that sort of data in the videos. I wouldn't normally do it. Um, but as we're uh, in lockdown and we're having these live streams to try and cheer everybody up, I thought I'd, uh, include, uh, I'd include those charts in yesterday's live stream. So if you want to have a look at what the, uh, the what the Beijing Climate Center is forecasting for winter 2020-21, all you need to do is have a rewatch of the live stream and does some quite interesting charts there. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest Gavs and WeatherViz channel member. So last week, we started opening the channel up to uh, channel members for £4.99 a month. You can become a Gavs and WeatherViz channel member and uh, that will entitle you to uh, various um, benefits Benefits and perks such as a uh, 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 badge that goes with your name when you comment on videos and also in the live stream, custom made uh, emojis, uh, a live stream starting in June for channel members, and early access to the NEO uh, forecast for winter of 2021 will be released in the summer. Uh, so, um, all you need to do if you want to become a member is click the join button. Uh, it's on the homepage, channel homepage, and with all the videos as well. Click join, and uh, I'll take you to another page where you'll be able to have a watch of a short video that I uh, made about it and also have a read of uh, of what it all entails. But well, I've got to say thank you to our third Gaz Worthy's channel member. All channel members get a shout out, of course. Uh, in the videos, that goes without saying. So, a uh, big thank you to Katrine Baso. So, Katrine Baso has become our third Gazworthy's YouTube channel member. Thank you, Katrine, uh, for doing that. Katrine, of course, our competition winner uh, last week. Katrine has become our third uh, YouTube uh, channel member. So, big, big thank you to to Katrine um, for doing that. Thank you uh, so much, Katrine, for becoming our third YouTube channel member. All channel members are going to get a mention and shout out in future videos. I want to give each member their own individual video, and, uh, and that's going to be absolutely uh, great. So big thank you uh, to Katrine for becoming our third YouTube channel member. Big thank you to all channel members uh, as well. Right, let's move on with the video. And I'm going to start off with the Central England temperature. And this is how things are currently looking for visual up to yesterday, the 19th of April. Uh, we're sitting at 10.6, an anomaly of 3.2 degrees uh, above average. It's been a very warm first half to April, and these warm conditions are continuing into the second half of the month. This is going to be a very substantially warmer than average month. The only question is how warm will it be? I've got a feeling the CT will finish somewhere in the tens. So somewhere between 10.0 to 10.9. But quite where that will be uh, remains to be seen. I don't think we'll have an 11 Celsius CT month. Famous last words. I don't think we'll quite pull that off. Uh, so the all-time record from... Uh, 2011 should be safe, uh, but uh, yes, I think we will have uh, another very significantly warmer than average April when we come to the end of the question is how warm will it be? 
These are the 500 mm high on the flow charts from Penn State University for the next week, 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in absolute high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Uh, orange and red extrapolate high pressure blue to low pressure. The ECM looks anti-cyclonic in the 7 to 10 day time frame with an area of above average heights, high pressure sitting over UK and much of Northern Europe. That probably brings in quite a chilly east northeasterly wind but it should be mainly dry as we come to the end of april of course the bonds have been flirting with this idea of things turning more unsettled for the very end of april and the uh, and the beginning of may and the gfs i can tell you if gfs is still going for that but the ecm definitely not the ecm is much more anti-cyclonic but look at the gfs uh, again these are 500 millibar heights uh and uh, it's taking us to the end of april and yes we've got low pressure this time not high pressure but low pressure through the country and bringing in a westerly flow so a uh, completely opposite uh completely opposite scenarios with um with uh, the ecm versus the gfs for the 7 to 10 day time frame they couldn't be more uh, more at odds really ecm is high pressure uh, GFS is low pressure. We've seen quite a bit of this over the past few weeks as well. The model sort of fighting it out when you would normally expect reasonable reliability in the 7 to 10 day time frame. We have seen these big splits between the, the two models. So um, we should wait and see. It'll be resolved, of course. But uh, it is interesting that it's been going on for some time, this high degree of uncertainty. Uh, these are the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles. And let's go to the weekend at South Rockingham today. If you'd like to have your local town or city feature within this section of the video, then all you need to do is email us at galswebbies at gmail.com or uh, ask us for our social media accounts. We're always happy to feature your local town or city in this part of the video. So uh, we're starting uh, off warmer than average, of course. There's the upper air temperatures there. The red line is a 30-year temperature average, so we're above average. We're going to stay above average for the next few days as well. As we get towards the weekend and then on into next week, you see the upper air temperatures are uh, dropping away. So there they go. There's a decline in the upper air temperatures returning back to average. I mean, no sign of uh, anything particularly warm coming up through the opening days of May. Perhaps more strikingly though is precipitation. So we've got loads of dry weather up until the weekend. Until the weekend, it's basically dry all the way. After that, the precipitation spikes start to come back quite significantly, actually. And it does look as well as we come to the end of April and the beginning of May, the GFS ensembles are forecasting or indicating a change to much more unsettled and wetter conditions so within the gfs ensembles it would appear that this scenario from uh, the gfs to turn things much more unsettled gfs operational run within its ensemble that is quite well supported i think that changed to much cooler and much more unsettled conditions too but then we've got the ecm completely different so it is very very confusing about where things are going for the end of april and the beginning of may uncertainty 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 i think is going to be the optimum word over the coming uh few days temperature anomalies with uh, the gfs from the 28th 28th of april largely slightly above average so it's not a particularly big deviation but most places are slightly above average precipitation anomalies from the 20th 28th of april still drier than average too this is how the GFS is looking for Thursday. We are dominated by high pressure on Thursday and we're bringing in an easterly flow. So mainly dry and fine conditions uh, continuing on Thursday. Pressure just begins to weaken a little bit on Friday. Maybe a few showers start to break out. Mostly dry and warm then though. Into the weekend, then we start to drop this trough in from the northwest. It's not a particularly deep trough, but it probably is enough to bring um, at least showery bursts of rain. Uh, with it as we get through to Sunday. And that forms an area of low pressure by Monday uh, next week. So in a week's time, we've got an area of low pressure sitting across south south east. That's bringing quite wet conditions, potentially, to southern and southeastern parts of the country. And a chilly east to north easterly wind is there as well. And then moving up towards day 10, we'll just keep low pressure very close to the country. So further showers, if not longer spells of rain, uh, quite close to the country. Unsettled, at least, um, we can say. Uh, maybe very unsettled and uh, looking quite cool uh, as well, really. 
Um, this goes on into the beginning of May. So now we're into the opening days of May. And we're starting to bring low pressure in off the Atlantic. So very unsettled uh, weather patterns here from the GFS moving through the opening days of May. Uh, proper low pressure systems coming in from off the Atlantic. Now look what the GEM is doing. So this is the Thursday again, dominated by high pressure on Thursday. High pressure continues into the weekend, albeit just weakened a little bit. So a few showers could break out. Uh, early in the weekend, but essentially we're still under a ridge of high pressure. And then by Monday, now at this point, remember, the GFS is forming an area of low pressure over and to the south of the country. But with the GM, by Monday, we're actually back under the high pressure again. So no particularly unsettled weather with the GM. Uh, and as we move up towards day 10, again, the high pressure holds sway. Up to day 10, basically, high pressure is in control uh, with the GM up to the 30th of April. High pressure remains uh, the dominating factor. Uh, the ECM looks like that again, mainly dry, warm easterly winds on Thursday. Pressure weakens a little bit uh, Friday into Saturday. There could be some showers breaking out, but it's not a particularly unsettled scenario at all. And then into next week, well, the high pressure, sort of on the 500 millibar height on the road chart, Penn State University. Into next week, the, the ridge just re-strengthens, actually. So if the ridge becomes stronger through uh, into the middle of next week. High pressure is dominating over and to the northeast of the country. Winds are coming in from the east northeast. It could be a bit chilly, but it does keep us mainly dry. It's nowhere near as, as unsettled that as the GFS. So... <laughs> Quite what's going on in around a week's time. Will we turn unsettled or will we maintain the high pressure? That is going to be the focus of the videos, I think, in the next few uh, in the next few video updates. What's going to happen with this ridge? Will it break down and allow low pressure in? Or will the ridge keep us basically dry, albeit maybe a little bit cooler as we get towards month's end? We shall see. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10. This gets us to the 30th of, uh, of April, the last day of the month, it's from the Icelandic Met Office. So uh, we have 20 members of the ECM Ensembles, including the operational and the control run. The control run is run we've just been talking about, of course, that have the above average heights extending in from Northern Europe into Western Europe. Low pressure is out to the northwest. Jet streams pushed out to the northwest too. They're keeping us mainly dry, but they might be bringing in. Uh, as we saw some sort of chilly east north east type flow. 18 are going for more unsettled uh, conditions. Low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, kind of similar to what the GFS operational and GFS ensembles are hinting at. So they're in line with the GFS. These 18 just here are more unsettled. And then 13 with low pressure in the Atlantic, but a ridge still just about holding on, but that ridge is under pressure uh, from low pressure both to our west and also to our east. So inconclusive with the ECM on solids, there is a significant option to start to turn things more unsettled by day 10. Uh, whoops, gone too far forward, so there we go. Uh, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 5th of May. Have 20 members of the ECM on solids still with high pressure dominating, keeping us mainly dry. 18 unsettled low pressure is over and to the south of the country bringing in easterly winds and there will be risk of some rain and 13 with low pressure coming in off the atlantic and they're in a westerly flow again similar to what the gfs operation run is doing now if you put the 18 here but are quite unsettled with the 13 here then the ecl ensembles actually favor a change to unsettled conditions through the first week of may um, and the 20 that we have here are more of a minority option, will be quite a significant minority. So the ECM on summers could be shifting towards something more unsettled, but maybe taking a little bit longer to do it than uh, the GFS operational and its ensembles. Uh, finally, Seth SV2, so these are 500 millibar heights broken down into uh, week periods. The first week period takes us from the 20th to the 26th of April. The coming week is still anticyclonic. High pressure this time is sitting to our north, and we're bringing in the wind from an east to northeast direction, mainly dry. Um, and high pressure ruling the roost. Week two is going to be the 27th of April to the 3rd of May. Low pressure then heads in off the Atlantic. So that's beginning to turn things more changeable. I won't see any more than that, but it certainly is turning things more changeable. High pressure is breaking down quite significantly, and uh, we would expect some rain for the end of April and the beginning of May. So the CFS is in line with the GFS, uh, really. 
Uh, but not for long. Maybe go through to week three, and this is before to the 10th of May, and then above average heights come back to our south. Low pressure's pushed away to the northwest with the jet stream. That's building the ridge back up from the south to southwest. That's turning warm and dry there from the 4th through to the 10th of May. And then week four is the 11th to the 17th of May. Just a weak ridge then, sitting to the north of the country. Low pressure is away towards Greenland and Iceland. Jet stream is doing something a bit like that. That's a little bit more anti-cyclonic, a little bit drier, uh, continuing from the 11th to the 17th of May. But the ridge is weakened a little bit compared to week three. So uh, it could be starting to turn more showery, perhaps. Uh, so this is how temperature normally is looking with surface V2 for week one. This would be 20th, 26th of April. And uh, close to average, really, with temperature, temperature normally. Perhaps even a little bit cooler than average for England and Wales. A little bit above average for Scotland. Week two is the 27th of April to the 3rd of May. A little bit warmer than average in most parts of the country then. Week three, this is when the ridge builds up from the south, of course. It's the 4th to the 10th of May, and it's substantially above average. Week four reverts closer to average. It's the 11th to 17th of May. Goes a little bit nearer uh, to normal. Precipitation-wise, very dry for week one. 20th, 26th of April, significantly drier than average in the week ahead. Week two reverts to average precipitation, so clearly it's going a bit more unsettled from week one to week two as we lose those very dry conditions and we go to near normal rainfall. Uh, week three has no particular signal. This could be average, but probably I would suggest no particular signal. I would have thought this would like to be a drier week as the ridge starts to build up from south. And then week four, which is the 17th of May, that one also has no particular signal. But I would have thought those two weeks, weeks three, four, like to be relatively dry. So it is uh, quite a confused picture at the moment. We've been seeing a lot of this over the past uh, week or two. As I've been saying in the videos, whether this has anything to do with uh, the lockdown and lack of observational data from aircraft, I'm not sure. But we have been seeing a lot of this uh, intramodal sort of variation, battling going on between model output within sort of the days uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 time frame. It could just purely be down to the weather patterns themselves. But it is, April's not really a month that you associate with uh, a large degree of model uncertainty. And that's what we've got today, definitely, as we're looking towards the uh, day 7, 8, 9, 10 time frame, because we cl clearly saw that the GFS and the ECM are keeping the high pressure going right way through to the end of April, really, where the GFS wants to turn things much more unsettled. And it does have support from its ensemble as well. So we shall see how it all revolves. We'll have more about this uh, tomorrow, of course. It'll be interesting to see which way this goes, which model uh, has got this right. But um, one of them will have to back down, whether it's the ECM or the GFS. Uh, we'll hopefully find out uh, tomorrow. Right, that's it for your videos for today. Tomorrow we're going to have the ECM WF 30 day look ahead for the UK and for the rest of Europe too. And there'll be another week, 10 day uh, uh, as well tomorrow. That's all for now though, and thanks for watching.